Thanks for joining us today. We love to hear how God is using this ministry in your life. So we encourage you to share your story with us at info at fellowshipgj.com. Also, if God is using this ministry to impact you, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially. And you can do that online at fellowshipgj.com and pick the giving option that works best for you and help us continue to bring the message of Christ to our community and beyond. Again, thanks for joining us and enjoy today's message. We've been hitting a topic, the topic called the power of change. And we've been hitting this topic from all different angles. Because there might be, there might be now, an area or two in your life that needs a little work. There might be something in your world that you say, I wish was different. There might be something in a mate's world, your husband, your wife, that you wish he'd tweak or she would tweak it just a little bit. So we've been hitting this, this topic. Now, if you, if you feel like that there is something in your life that you need to change, therefore you want to tap the brakes on it a little bit in order to be able to make a major change in your life, then doing that is either going to be really hard or it's going to be really, really hard. <laughs> because there's nothing about making changes in your life, especially when you've been going a certain direction for any period of time, that is going to be easy. And that's why it's important for us to understand that every person in this room can start living a different life, but it is going to mean you're gonna to have to tuck into the power of the Holy Spirit who makes all things possible. So here's the topic. I really wanna live a blessed life. I really do. I mean, we know we have heaven waiting for us one of these days and that's gonna be awesome. We're gonna see our loved ones again. You heard all about it last week but we still have to do life until we get there. And the kind of life that God wants us to live until we get there is a blessed life that he has set up for us. So this morning, if you want in on a blessed life, let's pray together. Father, we love you with all our heart. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would change us in the areas where we need to be changed. Because there are areas in our life that we desperately need to have changed. There are areas in our life, Father, that if we could just get rid of some stuff, if we could add some stuff, Father, then our life would be so much differently. But we're just kind of stuck doing things the way we've always done them. So, Father, in this room, I pray right now, you would change people's minds. You would change our thinking. I pray that you would open up our minds and open up our hearts. That we might hear this message even now, that every person in this room would start living a super blessed life. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I don't know if it was our trip to uh, the Billy Graham Memorial Library, which, guys, for me, that was a bucket list, life-changing event. One that I did not see coming or did not think would hit me the way that it hit me. But as Ann and I spent about three and a half hours at that place in Charlotte, and then we stood out by the memorial headstones of Ruth and, and Billy Graham, uh, there was just some things that took place in my life. There was some major changes, major things that God just started working on. I don't... Now listen, I don't know that if that's where it started or if it started in the fact that at the end of this year I'm gonna turn 60. I don't know if that was it. I don't know that if it's because over the last 40 plus years I have helped hundreds upon hundreds of families with memorial services, funeral services for their family members and their loved ones. I have stood in the casket selection room more times than I can even remember. I have walked through cemeteries more times than I could possibly count. I don't know. Uh, that that's the reason for what's happening in my life. I don't know if it's the ongoing conversations that I'm now having with friends that I went to high school with that are pastoring and in ministries who have loved ones or family members that have terminal illnesses that they are dealing with. I don't know if that's it or the recent home going of my own mother. But the subject of how short this life is seems to be coming up in my life and around me more and more these days than it ever did in the past. Never came up when I was in my 20s, never came up when it was in my 30s, but it seems to be coming up more and more. Now, common sense will just let you know that this life is very, very short. If you keep having them birthdays, if you keep blowing out all them candles, you know that this life will soon, one of these days, eventually run out. 
Now, for some of you in your 20s and your 30s, you may not think about that right now, but, but if you're in your 20s and your 30s are coming, and if you're in your 30s, your 40s are coming, and are you seeing where this is going, right? And you think them birthdays are a good thing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. You just celebrated another year, which means you are one year closer to not being here anymore. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. And ladies and gentlemen, even though I am not shy, Amanda Biltman will still not hand me a microphone on this stage when the singers are singing. I, I do not understand why. Let me give you a fresh insight for those of you that don't know this. Look at this. Life is like a roll of toilet paper. The further you get in, the faster it goes. Hmm. So since life has an expiration date and you want to live a blessed life, you better get at it. You better get at it. Because procrastination is the enemy to a life that is limited. Because your time becomes more valuable, the more it becomes more limited. Now, I want to speak this for myself, and I want to speak this also for many people in our church that I know and that I love. I have lived a very blessed life. I have seen God's hand on me. I have watched him bless me, protect me. Anna and I have been able to do things that I never thought that us, us two kids from Fort Worth would have ever been able to do. We have gone places that I thought, no, no, no. I mean, I could not even imagine going to some of the places, doing some of the trips we've done, being able to go where, being able to have what we have, drive what we have, live in what we've lived in over the last 41 years of marriage. I'm telling you, listen to me. I am a blessed man and I do not try to hide those blessings. I put it in your face if I possibly can because God has blessed me. It's not something that I deserve. Favor is not fair. You cannot earn it. But thank God when you have his favor on your life, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And many of you have lived a very blessed life and that too is a wonderful thing. But some of you, please hear me, are not living a blessed life. But there has been some things in my life, some things straight out of the word of God that I allowed to impact me at a certain season of my life and to get into the very makeup of the DNA of who I am. And I decided that whether somebody else agrees with it or not, somebody else is going to go along with it or not, whether the majority is voting on it or they're not voting on it, if God said these certain things that he said, then I was going to make my life based on those very things. And as a result of that, as a result of that, God has given me a blessed life. And I believe with all of my heart, and here's my passion for you this morning, that you will get these very simple, straightforward things from God's word tucked deep down inside your soul. And you will make a major change. You won't just tap the brake, you'll stand on it. And you'll say, this is how my life has been going. But it's not going that direction anymore because it's running out. And things don't look any better than they used to a year ago or five years ago. This is how my parents used to live. This is how all my friends at work are living. But it is no longer going to be the way that I live. I am going to be a man or a woman of God who has God's favor on my life. And me and everybody I love is about to be blessed on a whole nother level than it ever been before. Last week, somebody asked me what my favorite part of the service was. And I said it was a time spent in the lobby after the service was over. I love you guys. And what a sweet, precious people that we have. There was a whole lot of neck hugging going on last week. A whole lot of tears shed. A lot of big, grown, strong men out there just bawling their eyes out, circled up, just hugging each other and just, just talking about different people we had in heaven. Last week, like many other weeks, out in the lobby, I had a number of people that told me that there was a time in their life where they just about committed suicide. They had a hurt, a pain, a loss of a loved one, or somebody walked out, and they said that it was so devastating to them that they, they about took their life. A couple of people said they attempted and it did not work. One man said, I pulled the trigger, but the gun did not go off. 
And as I looked at these people and I talked to them, the problem with suicide is someone who commits suicide has decided to cancel out their future because of their past. When their past has just been preparation to finally get them to a blessed place that God had been preparing them for all along. The past is a setup for you. Please, please understand this. If you ever have, or you might be contemplating suicide because of a hurt or a pain in your life, they please, please just do that. Before you throw your whole life away, why don't you try throwing your whole life at God just one time in your entire life? Just once. And maybe today, maybe today will be that day. Hebrews said this, chapter 4, verse 1, God promises, God's promise of entering into his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. Man, nobody in this room is going to, experience, going to fail to experience heaven, are you? You're not, you're not going to do that, are you? There's not a person in this room who's going to, because it says some people are going to fail to experience it. I just got to pause a minute. You're not one of those people, are you? Do you have heaven? Got a lock on it through Jesus? Raise your hand. Okay, all right, let's just make sure somebody didn't slip in here. Heads bowed just for a second and just pray this prayer. And just do it to yourself and do, just do it for yourself to the Lord. Father, forgive me of my sins. Give me a home forever in heaven. I trust you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. And I don't want to die and go to hell. So, Father, please, I pray. And Jesus, would you save me? I make you my Lord and Savior and partner with me in this life that I would not be a person that would miss out on the experience of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so if you just did that for the first time, tell somebody at lunch today. Now take a look at this. For this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. In other words, if you don't listen to what God says, then heaven or anything else isn't going to do you any good. For only we who believe can enter into his rest or go to heaven. As for the others, God said, I in, in my anger I took an oath, they will never enter my place of rest, even though this rest has been ready. Oh, it's been prepared for a long time since he made the world. Who are they? Those who didn't listen and those who didn't believe. I believe, now listen to me, I believe that people can be saved, they can have a home forever in heaven, and they can still continue to live the messed up life they were living before they got saved, and it never affect them in a positive way in this life. How about that? How about that? And I believe the majority of the Christians who have a home forever in heaven will never experience a blessed life until they get there. Oh no, oh no, I'll bring it back around to that. I know that's depressing. I'll bring that one back around here in a minute. But over the next 12 minutes, I'm gonna do my very best to put in the very simplest form, as straightforward as I can, how you cannot be one of those people that missed a blessed life, but yet you're saved, okay? Are you ready? Here we go, Philippians chapter three. I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. A little background on Hebrews real quick. The whole theme of the book of Hebrews is a book of better things. So if you're reading Hebrews, the writer is trying to tell us is that God's kids and convince us people that God has better for you than what you've ever believed up to this point. For if you understand this, that God always takes you to something better and he doesn't take you to something backwards. Listen to me, that's important. Your God always takes you to better. He does not take you to backwards. And if you are living behind you, you are not living the plan that God has for your life. God's plan for his children is better. Regardless of what you've been through in the past, you've got to forget it and press on to what God has for you in the future. All you gotta do is keep going. That's all you gotta do. I can't tell you the number of times in my life where I had to preach to myself and say, Hooper, just get up and keep going. Just get out of bed this morning and keep going. Well, that was hurtful. Well, that was painful. That shouldn't happen to me. That wasn't fair. It doesn't make any difference. Forget it and press on. 
because I believe with all my heart that God has something better for me that's just ahead for me and I cannot dwell in living in the past. And you can't either. Your heavenly father has better for you. That, that's the first point. God has got better for me. God has got better for me. If you don't understand this, you're never going to be able to forget the past and to look for what lies ahead and to press on. I am convinced, my dear brother, I am convinced, my dear sister, that God has put something just out ahead of you. That if you'll just keep going, you're about to experience something that you've never experienced for in your entire life. And I would hate to have come this far and have dealt with all the challenges and the victories and the ups and the downs and the highs and the lows and the celebrations and the heartbreak and the disappointment and the grieving and the pain and then miss what God has for me. Now listen, while I'm just talking about this, I'm not, I don't want anything that God has for you. I don't want your money. I don't want your house. I don't want your wife. I don't want your kids. I don't want your bills. I don't want your dog. I don't want your cat. If it's yours, it's yours, and I don't want it. But I want to make sure that whatever God has planned for me in this life, I get every drop of it before I leave this life. I do not want to get to heaven and God say, Hooper, do you know what you could have had if you just would have shut up and kept going? I am 60 years of age almost, and my heavenly Father is still teaching me how to shut my mouth. You don't need to clap over that one. That wasn't worthy of a clap. But you too, right? Come on. Man, press on, press on. This ought to be our life first. Don't, don't cancel out your future because of your past. Your past served a purpose. It was preparation to get you where God wants you to be headed. You say, well, if God has something prepared for me, why hadn't he already given it to me? Because preparation is a process. To get you to a blessed place is a process. He, he's got the blessing ready. He created the garden, then he made man and put man in the garden. You don't, you don't have a baby then go home and go buy a bassinet. You make preparation for that which is coming, right? God did the same thing for you. He made preparation for you to have a blessing that he's preparing you to have. When am I gonna get it? When you're prepared. When that's gonna be? Well, I can tell you in a minute. The first thing you gotta do is understand that he's put something great out there in front of you and you just gotta keep going. Well, I don't feel like keeping, then you keep going. Well, this is too hard, well then you, you just keep going. Well, this is tough, well then you, you keep going. Right? You press on, you just press on. I'm gonna keep believing, look at this on the side screen. I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna keep expecting. Let's all say that together. I'm going to keep believing, I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep expecting. Man, listen, you finally got to say things out of your mouth that when you come to a hard place, well, I think I'm going to take my life. No, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep believing, I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep expecting. What? Things are bad. For things to get better for life to get better, for this job to get better, for the economy to get better, for this marriage to get better, for this relationship to get better. I don't think I've laughed my biggest laugh yet. I don't think I've shot my best golf game yet. That would have been a good time to say amen, dear golfer friends, but you missed it. I think I've got more to experience and I think you've got more to experience too. Something Better is coming your way. You have got to believe that. First Corinthians chapter two on the side screen. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Do you love him? Then yes. don't you ever give up on your future because of some stupid thing that happened in your past. Forget it, let it go, press on. So that's why, listen, first of all, I, 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 I've got some pretty big things ahead of me that I have not experienced yet. Everybody say that way. Everybody repeat this. I have got some pretty big things ahead of me that I have not experienced yet. So that's why, number two, I have got to stop wasting my emotions on people who do not value my presence. Shake their dust off you and keep going. Oh, pastor, that sounds, that sounds kind of harsh. What would Jesus do? 
Anybody want to know? Jesus is talking to his disciples in Matthew chapter 10, verse 14. If any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake its dust from your feet as you what? Why do you got to stay and put up with it? And be unhappy and be miserable and to be treated as if you have no value and to be disrespected? My dear, beautiful sister of God, if somebody can walk out of your life, let them walk. Let them walk. You have been beautifully made and God has a purpose for you. And some of you are miserable and missing the blessed life because you're hooked up to people that are not going anywhere. Listen, I love people and I wanna take everybody on this ride with me. But I promise you in a heartbeat, I will pull over to the curb and I will let you out if you don't wanna go because I'm not staying where I've been in the past. I have got to keep going forward. I'm not gonna keep talking about how bad something was yesterday. I got places to go. Time's running out on me. I'm not gonna be here forever. You aren't either, it's a precious commodity. And then I'm not gonna waste any of it. Now listen, when I remember you all wipe a tear from my face, but I will leave you behind if you're gonna stay behind. I will shake your dust off me if you don't value what you have in me and I will keep going. Some of you bless your heart on, listen sister, listen. Listen, I'm just talking to my sister friends for a minute. Some of you have never been treated the way that you should be treated as a beautiful princess daughter of God by a man. And the reason why you haven't is because you allow it. My sister, my sis. And when you realize, wait a second, God has got something better ahead for me. Well then get moving, get walking, get, get pressing. But you have, got to, you have got to shake the dust off you of people that do not, that do not waste your feelings. Uh, listen, th 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 I, think this, I think this is really good. When you, when you get older, things start to change a little bit in your life. And, and, and you start to realize that my time isn't what it used to be. So when you get older, you gotta, you gotta do what Jesus did in Luke chapter nine and verse 51. You've gotta fix your focus. I, I, I like this here. It says, the Bible says that because the, the time was at hand, Jesus set his face. He set his face. What does that mean? It means he had this determined look on his face that he was going to do what he was going to do next. And you know what it was? To go to Jerusalem and die for us. But he set his face and one town wouldn't receive him because he had fixed his face. He set his face to go to Jerusalem. As you get a little older and time start running out, you got to fix your focus. You gotta say that there are certain things that you're gonna do and there are certain things you're not gonna do. When you set your face, listen, when I set my face, when I fix my focus, you can roll your eyes at me all you want to and it is not gonna knock me off my path at all. You can park in my parking space, you can, you can sit in my seat, you can hurt my feelings and I'm still gonna be down front worshiping God sitting in somebody else's seat. You understand what I'm saying? None of that stuff's gonna move me at all. Why, because I'm set. I'm, do, I'm doing what God wants me to do, I'm set. Well, I, Hooper, I think the life you've chosen is stupid. Here's another, here, well, here, here. I do not care what you think. And I do not care what the majority thinks. I do not. Well, a whole bunch of people say, I do not care what a whole bunch of people say. I have fixed my focus based on what, based on what saith the word of God for my life. It's fixed. You cannot knock me off of it. You can't hurt my feelings. I do not get offended easily and I don't need another dose of beta Satan. I'm fine. Let me tell you something that happens as you start growing older. Uh, first, you're, you're gonna stop majoring on minors. There's a whole lot of stuff in the news that if I just get become a grouchy old man are gonna bother me. There's a whole bunch of stuff happening in this world, the crazy stuff happening in California right now. Just, just crazy stuff. Have you heard about the cities in California that are gonna make having plastic straws illegal? As if that's their biggest problem? <clears throat> Do 
But if I'm not careful, I can spend all my time on stuff like that, harping on it, yelling about it. And as you get a little older and you realize time's running out, you stop majoring on minors. There's things, I listen, there's things used to bother me, I just don't care. Pastor, what do you think? I don't. Well, I want you to know what you think about. Well, I don't think about it. I just don't. Pretty soon you find out that some of the things you used to have your feelings hurt about, man, they seem funny to you now. Matter of fact, you're a little bit embarrassed that you ever let that person or that thing or that incident hurt your feelings to start with or cause you a tear. It's like, are you kidding me? That don't even register on my give a rip scale today. I'll tell you another thing that happens when you're getting older that maybe it's not a good thing, but when I was in my 40s, I used to think it to myself and not say it. But now that I'm turning 60, I just go ahead and blurt it right on out. <laughs> Anybody else here do that? <laughs> yeah, 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 that maybe we need to be careful about that. If I'm gonna live a blessed life, I'm gonna break it down for you real simple and real quick. Number one, stop complaining. Just shut up the complaining. It has always held God's people in a negative place. Stop complaining. Forget it and press on. Everybody say that. Forget it and press on. The only time you need to repeat it is when you're trying to help somebody else realize how silly they're being by complaining about the things that they're complaining about. Then you can dump something on them. But after that, stop complaining. You want to live a blessed life? You have got to shut up complaining. You have got to. Number two, start believing God. It's that simple, just do what he says. Do what he says. If he says shake the dust off, shake the dust off. But I don't know what I'm gonna shake it off. Start believing God. Did he say you're going to heaven through Jesus, yes or no? Did he say he'd bless you if you gave him the first 10% of your income, yes or no? Well then start believing God. And watch what happens, here's the third one. Keep putting God's stuff first. Keep putting God's stuff first. That's fix your focus. Seek first the kingdom of God. Take a look at this on the side screen. When you take care of God's house, God takes care of your house. And you know what God has done for me my whole 41 years of being married to my sweet, sweet Anna? God has taken care of my house. You need to know why or you got it figured out. I think a blessed life is like salvation. <clears throat> I think a blessed life is like salvation. The Bible says that the majority of people on this planet are not going to heaven. Remember the verse, wide is the road that leadeth to destruction. You remember what else he said? He said, and in comparison, narrow is the way, and few people in comparison ever find a way into heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So the reality is the majority of the people on this planet are not going to heaven. You can never let the majority be the people who rule and run your life. The majority's wrong. Well, I thought majority rules. No, no, the majority in this world is wrong. They're just wrong. So there are those of us in this room and hopefully every loved one that we have and many, 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 many others, but it still makes up a few in comparison. God said that. Now, now listen to me on this. After we accept Christ as our personal savior, the majority of Christians will never live a blessed life. They won't. The ones who do stop complaining and start praising. They start believing, God, how do you want me to do this? Life? The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him as righteousness. It did not say Abraham was righteous and it was counted unto him as righteous. He was messed up, he was sinful, but because of his belief in God, God just considered him right. Well, he wasn't right, I know, but God considered him right, why? Because he believed. I, we are not right. But if we, God, I believe you. I believe that you said what I just did was wrong. I believe that, because I believe you. Well, then I'm right. Bam. That's big. Oh, man. You gotta start believing. And then if you will just, are you with me? God, you're first. 
You're first in my home, in my finances, in my work. First part of every day, I'm talking to you, Lord. I'm talking to you. Little coffee with God. Going on a worship walk with your father. Anybody see the sun come up this morning? Woo, little worship walk time. What a sun was coming up this morning because the first part of my day is yours. The first part of my relationship with Anna is yours. The first part of my income is yours. I am about kingdom stuff. Listen, you might think God is about giving you more money. God is about you giving your money into his kingdom work so that he can give you more money, so that you can give it into his kingdom work so he can give you more money. The majority will miss it. Or you just start believing and doing what he said. Many Christians are gonna miss out on living the blessed life. They're gonna to go to heaven, though. Well, you got that to look forward to. Life's gonna stink till you get there. Can I tell you a little difference? This is kind of cool. For those of us that are living a blessed life, our life is going to go by very quickly. For those of you that are saved and not living a blessed life, your life is going to drag on miserably until you get there. Do you finally want to live a blessed life, my friend? <laughs> Do you? Would you pray with me with every head bowed, every eye closed? <sighs> Father, I'm believing every person in this room is your child but I also know that every person in this room is not living a blessed life. And they're not, Father, for simple reasons. Simple reasons. We complain too much about our life, about how things have been in the past, and we fail to forget them and press on. We don't believe you when it comes to tithing. We don't believe you when it comes to serving. We don't believe you when it comes to putting you first. And as a result, Father, we're trying and struggling to get everything we need and take care of everything we need to take care of. And you're just letting us do that on our own, mostly. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that every person in this room would fix our focus on you first. Your kingdom work first. And Father, in seeking you and putting you first, then Father, you said, if we seek first the kingdom of God, all these other things will be added unto us. So if we do what you want us to do first, if we take care of your house, you take care of ours. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm not saying that this is gonna be easy for anyone to make that change when they have seen generation after generation do it wrong. And when the majority is saying, how foolish of you to do your life that way. I pray for a fixed focus, that we would set our face, that you would be our God and our King and not you and Buddha and not you and you age, new age stuff and not you and what somebody else thought or what somebody else said. You and you alone and your word has caused us to fix our face. Time's running out. We don't have a whole lot of time here. We don't get this life to do over. Yes, we got heaven, but we want to live a super blessed life until we get there. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm going to ask you this question. How many of you want your life? Well, you know what? With, don't, don't look around for a minute. How many of you are living a blessed life? Would you raise your hand? Would you slip it on up? Slip it on up? Did you all feel the hands that went up around you if yours didn't? God doesn't have favorites. God has intimates the Davids of this life that will just tuck in closer to him and love on him. And then he says, oh, well, now, if you're going to do that, then I'm going to put you in a higher place. It's yours if you want it. It's yours if you want it. But absolutely no one can decide for you except for you. Just one time in this life. Throw your whole life at God and see what he does with your business, your finances, your relationship, your joy, your happiness, and maybe even your golf game. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's 
message. If you've never taken an opportunity to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, we would love to talk to you about doing that right now. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, and 10, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. And you can do that right now today. Pray this prayer to begin your relationship with God through Jesus. God, I am sorry for my sins. I've made mistakes. I apologize. I turn from them and I turn to you. I want to make you the Lord and leader of my life. Guide me. Teach me how you want me to live. I want to live for all eternity in heaven with you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins and raising to life again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, we believe if you prayed that prayer, you have begun your relationship with Jesus Christ. And we would love to hear from you here at Fellowship Church. Simply contact us at 970-245-PRAY or go online to fellowshipgj.com and tell us your story.